I am Alan Duncan and I work at the International Livestock Research Institute and I lead uh, what we call the Fodder Adoption Project which is a project funded by IFAT which deals with the whole area of feed scarcity for smallholder farmers. Uh, we have activities in, in, in Ethiopia, Syria and Vietnam. So it's a sister project to the Fodder Innovations Project. And the, the Fodder Adoption Project I guess um, was set up to deal with the problem of feed scarcity um, and the, the approach that we've adopted is uh, to keep the, the technology angle and the kind of institutional angle hopefully somehow in balance. Um, so the, the, the approach that we've been adopting is uh, to develop st uh, groups of state, what we call stakeholders, so people who are involved with the fodder and livestock sector could be people from the government, from the ministry, it could be uh, people from research, it could be private sector players, um, it could be farmers representatives or people from dairy cooperatives for example. And the idea is to, to get those people together and working as a group to address some of the issues of feed scarcity. So that the way that we've operated is to develop these what we call innovation platforms which brings these different players together to develop joint action on the issue of feed scarcity. In one of our sites uh, we started with developing a small group of, of these people involved in, in livestock and fodder and we went in with a fairly traditional approach I suppose, introducing fodder to farmers, um, allowing farmers to grow fodder on their fields and learn about uh, the sort of technical aspects of growing fodder. That happened in the first year so farmers planted fodder um, but then wider issues began to emerge so very soon um, the issue of the whole lack of crossbred dairy cows came into the frame and dairy, dairy, crossbred dairy cows began to come into the system um, to provide um, higher milk yields to make use of the fodder that they were growing and then as things developed more actors came on board and we found that the the technology so the growing of the improved fodder varieties was actually quite a good catalyst to, to uh, bring interest from a whole range of people and that acted as a good kind of magnet for bringing people in and getting them interested. Uh, before too long the whole issue of milk marketing came on into the frame so lots more milk was being produced but then there was a need to find market channels for that milk and so the, the local dairy cooperative began to get involved and soon people were talking about AI and a whole range of other issues. So what we found, I suppose, was that going in with the technology at the beginning um, was a useful kind of engine for getting people interested and very soon the issues became much wider than just the fodder. It became the whole kind of marketing system, health issues, uh, the breeding issues became part of the whole uh, the, the frame. Um, so I think some of the lessons we've learned are that Fodder is not really, uh, it's quite a useful starting point uh, for getting people interested in developing of smallholder systems, but it, it can't be the end of the story. It, it, we need to think in a much more broader systems perspective and think about the whole, what we call value chain, so production of fodder leading to milk and then uh, marketing of milk to consumers. Um, I guess another lesson we've learned is that this is not trivial, it's quite time consuming to facilitate the interactions among different players in, in, the, in the area. Um, so we spend a lot of time dealing with uh, people in the field and uh, I guess one of the criticisms of the previous technology led approaches has been that they're very resource demanding and that there's no sustainability but I think we see that even using this kind of stakeholder platform approach is also quite demanding of resources and there's questions on the sustainability of some of those platforms after our project um, comes to an end. So these are some of the issues that we're exploring and we need to look for somehow sustainable ways of maintaining these platforms uh, for the long term among permanent um, members of what we call the, the innovation system. It's quite a new challenge for a, for a scientist to be doing these kind of processy things, no? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, I think I come from a, a technical background and I've had to learn to think much more broadly about uh, I've, come, I've come to the conclusion that technology is, is only really one small part of the equation and 
really a lot of it is about human interactions and the way in which organizations behave, um, some of the incentive mechanisms for people getting involved in development. These are really the key issues that limit uh, development, I think. We have lots of promising technologies, but in, in themselves they're not enough really to bring about change in widespread change in livestock systems.